Eight days ago, the people of South Florida and Louisiana were confronted by perhaps the most destructive natural disaster in our history. Tonight, I want to report to the nation on the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew and the effort required to help Andrew's survivors back on their feet. In the past week, I've twice visited Louisiana and Florida. And in Florida, where the storm was strongest, up to a quarter million people have lost their homes. Many huddle beneath the busted timbers of what was once a living room or a kitchen. There's no running water, no electricity. Little children are left without even a toy to play with. In the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew, a relief effort has risen, unprecedented in size and impact. And tonight, as we speak, almost 20,000 troops are on the ground, assisting in everything from providing meals to erecting tent cities. Basic human needs, food, water, shelter, and medical assistance are being provided. I appreciate the cooperative spirit here. The governor of Florida, the uh, mayor and the city manager of Homestead, the other cities here that are represented, and all are pitching in. I am so proud of what our military is doing, and God bless the volunteers. Welcome. The time is 1992. Tropical storm. Andrew becomes the first hurricane of the 1992 season. That was the headline on the 5 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center on Saturday, August 22, 1992. Some of you were either sleeping or not even thought about. Thirty years ago, when this storm was introduced, I, I got two little dogs. I would not take them no place. And I don't, you know, they would die. They are pleading. They are asking any doctor, anybody with medical, per, any medical personnel to go and help out in the shelters. Are you scared? Not really. Cool, calm, and collected. At Jackson Memorial Hospital, the hallways are lined with pregnant women. Now, the let me say this to you. I, I don't think this, uh, this um, hurricane is going to be as bad as, it, uh, as, as, as they're drawing out to be. But why take the chance? National Hurricane Center issued a hurricane warning for the Florida East Coast from Vero Beach to the Miami area, plus the Keys. Even with the storm, Less than a day away, uncertainties in the forecasts of that era kept the area of concern large. In Dade County alone, 515,670 people were ordered to evacuate. As far as anything beyond that, uh, I don't think 
Because you have the watch up in here, and the watch continues or something like that. Yeah, I would extend uh, Hurricane 1 and Problems Bug 1. This is a bit longer. I think we ought to drop them back kind of That's going to be close, but uh, we've got some time. And then keep your watch up. You can pick Tropical. Tropical morning and Hurricane Watch. Okay, so we're going south of Venice on the west coast, and Tropical Storm Morning and Hurricane Watch up to the Bayport. Up to the Bayport. Let's do that. So what we say uh, have been issued, we'll go ahead and say this, remains in effect here and here. My, so I'm going to go 7 11 feet and force it to the west coast. The rest of the city is about, you know, we're not going to take Whatever they put in the advisory, they have to leave. Right. Now, you're on time. No, and I always hoped it would not happen, but knew the day was going to come. The last announcement indicated the pressure of now 922 millibars, so it's getting very close to a category 5 hurricane. Well, we should go home. I'm still hungry. I wanted to get food. This is the high winds that we do expect. And again, those high winds will be starting later this evening. Winds news time, 4.02. We're going to do this and come right back to our continuing coverage of Hurricane Andrew right after this. Here they come. More carriers delivering new cars and trucks to yeah. Bill Seidel. <laughs> Nissan, Mitsubishi, Suzuki. Perfect. South Florida knows where to find a bargain. That's why Bill Seidel is the number one Suzuki dealer in sales in the United States so far this year. They were also number one for Mitsubishi in the southeast and Seidel wants to continue its leadership with one of their biggest sales events. Okay, I'll talk. So it's six o'clock, Sunday, wait, August wait, wait, wait. 23rd. All right. Okay, so the sun... Oh, <laughs> August 23rd, it's a Sunday. We're a little less than two hours away from when we're going to begin to feel the tropical storm force winds of Hurricane Andrew. Let's show you what we've done. You can see over here, we've already put the aluminum siding on. Follow me. I'm going to follow and walk and talk together. Aluminum siding up. Everything secured here. We've secured our swing here so that nothing uh, should happen uh, like it flying off. Now, if we can go around, we'll move around to the other side of the house, show you what we've done. Uh, right now, it's, it's a nice day out. You'd never know there's a hurricane coming because the sun is, is out and we have a little increase in the winds from what we had a couple of hours ago. And things look generally calm. We picked up most of the debris. There was a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, logs over by the electrical generator, transformer. Moved them all inside. Plants and rocks and other things that could be potential uh, flying objects we've also moved in the garage. I'm going to close this up right now. Everything on the side. My bedroom. Still need to cover up this side of my bedroom. A little concerned about that. Want to have some way of viewing the storm, but I don't think we're going to have that happen today because this is one of the worst storms they're saying to hit the United States. The largest storm ever to hit a metropolitan area. <laughs> Do you know what my cameraman is? Okay, and all around the neighborhood it seems like people are getting set good. Step on that rock, bitch. <laughs> no, but the interesting and surprising thing comes yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Stop, stop. The interesting and surprising thing <laughs> is that we don't <laughs> we don't <laughs> we don't have things we don't have the hurricane shutters here. Your turn. Talk to us. How do you? We're feel? all gonna die. How do you feel about this storm? Let's go down to the lake. Take us down to the lake, and you, you're our lakeside expert. How are we gonna do this? All the neighbors have have left, haven't they, Glenn? Is this what I'm going to have to do? No, I don't think so. Oh, I feel like crap. Those grips. Walk. Walk and talk. We'll go on to the neighbors. This is the highest. Put it past. 
still a couple of uh, party favors from the wedding. You can notice over here. Real nice. But they have an antenna up there. You think that's going to be there tomorrow, Glenn? It's going to be a real pity to start doing that. Right. Look at this. Wait a minute. All right. Look at this. Kevin's riding the storm out. They left our, their number? This would certainly be... Uh, Gone by tomorrow. Right through that window. No shit. Uh, you can feel the winds. It's interesting. The uh, the article that they showed showed uh, um, showed heavy clouds. But if you look, it's really not that bad. You know what I mean? Take a look outside right now. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Well, it can, it can be worse, but I don't know how much worse uh, because indeed the center of that storm is likely to come ashore in a highly populated area here in the southeast part. The storm was no joke. <laughs> okay. Now, have you noticed the wind is coming from the north northeast, whereas the hurricane should be coming from the south from the southeast, but. Hurricanes are weird. Hurricanes are weird. This one happens to be a Category 5. The process of evacuation for South Florida should be pretty much wrapped up by now. It is just about concluded. We're expecting to have the winds arrive, uh, start arriving uh, very, very shortly. Oh, there's a lake. Let's see if we can... You notice yeah. a lot of people on the lake have their houses boarded up, except for those schmucks over there. Those people. Those morons. That guy across the lake, what is he doing? I don't have... Is he fishing or is he praying? Who knows? These people over there have their houses boarded up. These people over here have their houses boarded up, but they left the door open. Really smart. I think our, our friends are really hot. Hate. Hate life. You think they're in for some serious damage? They have more windows than we do, and they're bigger. And they're facing the east. And there's nothing to block the wind. Okay. There's nothing to block any oncoming thing. Well, we'll just have to sit and watch it. Yeah. We could mount a camera outside. No, I think. And throughout the day, you could hear it going on right now. Hammering noises, noises of people sawing and uh, putting up wooden planks along their house to protect them from the awesome force of this Category Wah! 4 hurricane. Hurricane Andrew was already visiting the Bahamas. Amazing stuff. What is this out over here? We already seem to have some gas drill. Is this a gas line over there? Apparently so. Well, it's just a waiting game now. About 6.15 and we're going to go inside. We're going to secure their, their boat somewhat inside there. Ooh, what, what happened there? Nasty. We need drivers. Loser! Mock. Stupid freaking one. I got that on tape. That was really cool. I got that on tape. Okay. Well, we're gonna. I'm glad you did. I'm gonna surf until the cops come and drag me out of the water. Obviously, uh, some people out there have not heeded the warnings and have uh, uh, not done some of the things that we've been suggesting that they do foolishly. Let me, let me say something about what that guy just said. The cops are not going to come drag him out of the water. The cops do not care if that person uh, lives or dies at that point. The cops are out there to service and to serve people that are acting responsibly. 
the, the gentleman said uh, that that uh, he was gonna his time might be up. His time might very well be up. Well, very calm out. Very calm out. Very yeah, beginning to cloud up. Certainly, the winds are beginning to pick up. Little droplets of water. If you didn't know a hurricane was coming, you think it's just a bad storm. Everyone, nearly everyone, prepared for this. Side of cheddar. I don't know. I can't hear what you said against it. Let's see what the radio says. Northbound of the Palmetto approaching Flagler Street. Another with injuries at Flagler and 83rd. There may still be... Safe passage away from the Keys if you don't leave the Upper Keys area by 8 tonight. So please do so, as Frank said earlier, uh, you're taking your life in your hands. Reporting live from Traffic Central, Trish Anderson, 940 Winds News. Winds News Time 728. Not everyone has left Miami Beach yet. 940 Winds reporter Wayne Rooston says some are waiting to greet Hurricane Andrew. Mike Holliman lives on Trendy South Beach. Mike York Deco hotels, restaurants, and nightclubs, but he's taking a long last we can, I think, certainly say without, without question, this is going to be the most expensive uh, uh, natural disaster ever to hit the United States. Because I know some of you people there, you're acting foolishly for the sake of being together. Go be together in the shelter. Come back tomorrow. Your house is there. It's still going to be fine. We're about to start a briefing here now with uh, more information. I'll get back to you a little bit later. With that, at the Office of Emergency Management in Miami, this is Solon Zerby, reporting live from 940 Minutes. Thank you, Solon. The last flights in and out of Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport have come and gone. And now the entire operation will shut down until Andrew passes. Operation spokesman Jim Reynolds says when they will reopen has not yet been decided. If there is a storm surge and we have the airport, the highest elevation on the airport, I understand is only about 12 feet. So, so if we have a storm surge, there will be flooding on the airport. There will probably be debris on the runways. We're going to have to let the airport drain. We're going to have to clear the runways before we can put it back into operation. See if these guys As for passengers who got stuck at the airport, Reynolds says they've been transported to safety until they can resume their travel plans. In major hurricanes, there are plenty of photographs, I wish I had one handy to show you, of two-by-fours uh, going all the way through a palm tree. Now, that's mm -hmm. not a common thing, but if a two-by-four gets picked up just right in the wind and it's sailing along end-on, 
whatever it hits, it's going through it. If it hits your front door, it's going through it. If it hits a shutter, uh, many shutters, it might very well go through that. So th there are no guarantees in a storm with 140 mile an hour winds. And Hurricane Southeast Florida had a narrow escape with Hurricane uh, David in 1979, which veered off yeah. at the last minute. A hurricane warning is in effect for much of Florida, as you should know. Bob, did you ever think this was going to happen? No, and I always hoped it would not happen, but knew the day was going to come when it would. Right, we've talked about it many times. All right. Thank you, Bob. We'll still we'll keep going back to you as often as we can here, uh, as long as we can. Yeah. Well, it means that hurricane conditions are expected within 24 hours. We're actually expecting them in less than five. We should be start. We should begin feeling the fringes of Hurricane Andrew about midnight tonight, and those fringes will be tropical force winds, winds about 39 miles, 40 miles per hour. Now, um, we're getting an advisory from the National Weather what? Service about the know. County I'm Emergency getting... Management and the Sheriff's Department. They why, why would you want it so close to the garage? You need it close to Why? It's, it's the air element. Is that what they're saying? Is this I, what you... It, it, it would make no sense. Don't keep it out here. This is no sense. One of the reasons we move it closer to the garage is so that the, so the things don't touch it. The rocks don't touch it. It's not going to be able to do it. So why are we doing this, Glenn? Because I said so. Oh, okay. We've got the shutters, the candles all set up, flower pots inside. Again, the one area that we're real concerned with, this spare room. We have the sliding glass door over here, but probably not nearly enough uh, to prevent any wind from uh, escaping in here into the other house. These windows also could be shattered. But this will be our prime viewing location that we'll be able to monitor the storm from. A clear view of what's happening. And we'll keep you up to date. Hmm. What does this have anything to do with it? i just turn the camera on. 220. Our electricity has gone out in the morning. Hurricane isn't even here. Okay. Yeah. Over one million people lost power. We would like to think that we could solve this problem, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we really would. And some problems, hopefully, for people out there, we have solved through this whole process. But we can't solve the big one, as we can't keep this thing from happening. You know? But if you have some place to go, you need to go this absolute second. And again, Brian, it's, it's important to say that if the police officers are being told to not hit the streets, uh, this is virtually almost too late, really. To yeah, it really is, and I'm, I'm, uh, I want to phrase that carefully to say that if it were me and I was, uh, had been careless enough to not heed the warnings earlier thinking it wasn't going to happen, friends, it is going to happen now for Dade County. Now, once the storm goes even further inland, this intense part of the storm is going to go through Coral Gables, and it's going to go through uh, Coconut Grove, and it's going to go inland uh, into uh, the Kendall area, and it's going to be very, very bad all the way west, as far west as this county goes. Hurricane Andrew made landfall near Florida City.
about 25 miles south, around for 52 in the morning. Hurricane Andrew was the strongest and most devastating hurricane on record to hit southern Florida. When Hurricane Andrew roared across South Florida, it flattened homes, uprooted trees, and destroyed suburban blocks for miles around. Homestead was destroyed the most, with most of the residents losing their homes. We're talking about a safe area for the station where we will retreat, and we're going to try to get a television camera in we, there. We have Definitely the television a done, and, and uh, Bruce Carter have set up a television camera in there. Uh, we're going to get Tony Segreto is going to get set up over in there. It's a concrete area. Uh, explain storm surge again, and 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 when this is going to happen. Okay, we, we will do that because that is what the, the bottom line of this thing is going to be. They say pictures are worth a thousand words. Pictures can't describe the hurt most of these people were feeling. Andrew destroyed more than 63,500 homes, damaged more than 124,000 others, caused over $27 billion in damage, and left 65 people dead. Storm surges reached about 12 feet instead of the 20 feet that had been feared. Highest wind speed recorded was 174 miles per hour. Imagine losing everything, your neighborhood unrecognizable, no food, water, or power. Over one million people evacuated, which contributed to the low number of fatalities. The storm dramatically forced shifts in the population, driving nearly 40,000 people out of Miami-Dade permanently. Most will never forget this experience. We talked about our area where we are going to go in a cement enclosed area. Let's take, we have a remote camera, John Lugering over here. You're up. You're up. Why don't you go back? I think Tony Segreto is standing by in the center where we will go. As you can see... Yes, I'm in here, Kelly. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We can't see you yet, but we're getting there. I don't know if there's proper lighting in there so we can see. Well, oh, let's put it go. this way. There's lighting in there, but it's not exactly the not kind of lighting the best. where we're here used to. Here comes John Lugering, and uh, yeah, here we are. And uh, we are uh, in, as you, as you both indicated, the safest part of this building. In front of the house right now, I don't think we can see anything, but uh, around a quarter of three, winds seriously picking up, still able to step outside, uh, no electricity in the house, reports of a main power generator out in Fort Lauderdale. No, no, come on, come on, it's great, it's great. Smash the window. That's right. Okay. As we've said time after time, it's not the strong winds that break the windows that destroy homes. Okay, it's not the strong winds. It's the debris in the, the wind. Projectiles. It's the projectiles. It's little bits of anything. There is no way you could go clean up your entire neighborhood. There is no way it's impossible for you to get everything out of your neighborhood that the wind is going to pick up. It is, you're just not going to be able to do that. So you're going to have little pebbles, uh, uh, stones, pieces of someone else's roof uh, a mile away, mm -hmm. anything caught in that wind stream. And the fact is, that the further inland you go, the more time the wind has to pick that up. Yeah, it's starting to move. Come here. 